Greetings. This is a project I've been wanting to do for a really long time. I love camping, but I never really got used to sleeping in a tent, so I'm going to convert my RAV4 into an overnight car camper. Stay tuned. The first thing I have to do is take the back seats out. Now I have another video that goes into more specifics on how to do this, but suffice it to say, I need to take the back seats out so I can build the platform. One of the nice things about the RAV4 is that these flaps and panels that are in the back come out pretty easily. And I can use this as a pattern to trace the edge onto some three quarter inch plywood, and then I can build the rest of the bed platform off of that. I check my work frequently to make sure all the pieces are fitting properly, and it looks like they are. For the vertical supports, I used a couple of one inch planks. An interesting thing I did notice was that the back of my RAV is slanted ever so slightly toward the rear end of the car. So in order to make the bed platform level, I had to taper in the edges of the vertical supports just a little bit. Then I attached everything to the base with some wood glue and reinforced it with some wood screws. And gotta check one more time to make sure it all fits and everything's looking good. Measure twice, cut once. Words to live by. Now for the actual sleeping platforms themselves, I'm using half inch plywood because it's a little bit lighter weight, a little bit easier to work with. And then I'm gonna cover everything with this really thin area rug I found at the hardware store. I think I can cut this up so that it will fit all the pieces and then I can attach it with a staple gun. There. So this will just make the, the top of the platform a little softer and uh, Looks a little nicer too. With the rest of this area rug, I cut a piece that should cover the back seat area and just cover all these metal spots so they don't cut up our feet or our legs or whatever. And I cut some holes in this so that the legs that hold the bed platforms up can connect to the frame through these holes. So now we're going to try to load in the finished passenger side bed platform. Now that I have all the pieces together, I'm realizing it's very big and heavy, so this might take a minute. Oh, look at that. We're in. So now I've made four of these. These are the wood legs and these are gonna hold up the front of the bed platform. I bought several of these angle connectors which work pretty well for connecting the legs. Now on this end, I attached one and bent it at a, a very specific angle and that's to match where it connects to the car frame over there. And these bolts here, these are the actual bolts that were once used to hold the seats in and now they're gonna be used to hold the bed frame. This is the floor of the car. I pointed out these holes that I cut in this uh, rug earlier. And these holes line up directly with the holes in the frame where the chairs were attached. So I'm gonna take these legs that I created with this little joint and I'm gonna screw them in to these holes. Now that one's screwed in pretty tight and that's gonna hold up the passenger side. On the underside of the platform I attached a couple of U-shaped uh, connectors and the legs slide right up into there and that's what holds up the front of the platform. So here's the front of the passenger side platform and I designed it to fold down like this so that we could uh, bring the passenger seat back a bit. Uh, when you fold it out into its full length, you need to move the passenger seat up. So now that the seat is moved up, under here I've attached some metal brackets right here that fold up with this. So the idea being, you fold this up and then you take this metal uh, post and you stick it through these little eyelets. And there it is, just like that. And now, this isn't going anywhere. Once that's folded up, you can unfold this piece and now it's a straight flat bed about six foot two inches long. So in the very back I built in this little platform that slides out and this is where I can set up my little butane stove. This was uh, about thirty dollars. It's made by a company called Gas One and seems to be working pretty well. I'll put a link to it in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. 
And over on this side, I have a storage compartment, which is basically just a hole that I cut in the base and then uh, built a lid for it. And in there, I've got some sheets and the window blacks and some other stuff that I will talk about shortly. I got two more of these that I'm gonna connect. Uh, they're just like the ones on the passenger side, and these will hold up the driver's side platform. And the reason I made these separately as like a passenger side and a driver's side is because uh, a lot of times I camp by myself, and in those situations I only need one half of it, so I don't even bother putting in this side. I can use this space to, you know, put a cooler and all sorts of other stuff. But sometimes I have a lady friend go camping with me, so I made a driver's side bed platform so we can both fit. And finally, this is the driver's side flap that comes up. And then uh, attached up here is the leg. It's held on by uh, magnets, so you just pull that down. And there you go, now you have a stable driver's side platform. So frequently when car camping, you're gonna wanna black out the windows. Basically for two reasons, to keep the sun out and to keep other people from looking in while you're sleeping. So, I've taken uh, basically just a black piece of duvetine cloth. Uh, anything that is non-see-through will work. I cut the cloth to the shape of the windows, leaving about half an inch extra on all sides. And since the door frames are all metal, I ordered a stack of really strong but small magnets. Then, with a basic household stapler, I created little pockets around the edge to slip the magnets into. Sewing these pockets would have been a better way to do this, but a stapler will work in a pinch. Once you get all the magnets in, and I have, I think, six around the edge, it will just stick to the window frame. And there you go. Now nobody can peep on you. The rear window was a little bit more difficult to figure out because there's no metal around this edge. So I ended up going with a piece of black foam board, and this was probably the hardest part, uh, tracing the shape of this window and then cutting it out of the foam board. But this wedges more or less in here. There may also be times that you want to have the windows down, but you don't want the bugs to get in. For that, I just bought a roll of screen used in doors and windows. Again, I cut it to the shape of the window with a little bit extra and stapled magnets around the edge. At the bottom, I put in this metal bar because there's, there's nothing metal here to stick magnets to. And again, this goes in around the edge just like this, and now you basically have a screen window on your car. Now under here I have something very important. This is the Energy Kodiak, and it's basically a portable generator. It makes very little noise. It puts out, I think, 1100 watts, uh, or at least 1100 watt hours. So I can power my computer, I can power a fan or some lights at night, or even a toaster or a small stove. And I keep it under here, which works pretty well. You just have to make sure you leave enough air around the unit so that the fans can keep it cool. I also bought a couple of these clip fans. You can clip these to anything. They're small, portable. I'll put a link to these in the description as well. Uh, highly recommend those. One more thing I would recommend is some rain guards. Make sure you look up the right size you need for your particular vehicle. But these are great for keeping the rain out while you have your windows down. And yeah, highly recommend them. Again, all the products I bought are linked in the description. You can simply scroll down or if you're on a phone, I think you have to click a little twirly down icon and that'll take you straight to the products if you want to buy them yourself. Also, I should probably mention, I am not an expert in any of this. This is just what I've done. If you do the same thing to your car and you blow up your car, which I can't imagine how that would happen, not my fault. So do this at your own risk. Well, the only thing left to do is to try it out. So I'm gonna drive up to the mountains tonight and spend my first night camping in the car. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video.